Hello everyone, my name is Wyatt, this is Mr. Chimmy Comics himself. Hello people. Riley Davis, and today we are bringing you an episode of Novel Nook, and we are alternating, alternating really between a bunch of Star Wars novels that Riley wants to do, and the, yeah, here, here they are, oh, uh, we got a lot of reading to do. <laughs> We're alternating between these and the Halo series. And we're mainly doing the first three books written by Eric Nyland, but this book, The Flood, is a full novelization of the game Halo Combat Evolved. So it is separate from Nyland, but it's a does a very good job novelizing that game and adding different perspectives and lore to it. I think uh, William C. Dietz did a very good job with it. There were some things, like I read a different version. I have the original version. Riley here has the definitive version, which has some edits for the lore and stuff that they, some retcons a little bit. But um, for the most part, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. The only thing it's missing is a epic space battle that Nylon does amazingly well. But, I mean, can't really have that in Halo 1. Even though I would like to see how the Pillar of Autumn killed four Covenant ships there before it went down. Mm -hmm. Pretty hard to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, before we get into it, Riley, what did you think? Of? Well, um, if you caught our cast, I mentioned it in that. Um, yeah, you did a very good job on that, too. I, um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, I've only played Halo 1 once. Yeah, so, I let you borrow it that one I'm, time. Yeah, I really did not remember much of this happening. <laughs> well, so, the only thing that is in the game is the Master Chief parts, and he yeah, they don't yeah. show Alpha Base at all or any of that. Okay, that makes sense. Like, just the chapters where Master Chief is fighting aliens, those are the mm -hmm. chapters that happen in the game. I didn't remember that either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't, I did not, I honestly thought that the Flood were only in Halo 3. <laughs> that's what I thought so um, that they just popped in out of nowhere yeah but like this, and... this was like a new story to me basically mm -hmm. but I had fun with it um, I, I like it um, obviously I did not retain anything from the games but I do like how this goes into depth and lets you see into the mind of um, all of the different characters the way a game can't really do mm -hmm. So I think it it doesn't like they don't make it feel like you have to read these books to or play the game to enjoy one or the other, mm -hmm. but this definitely adds to it, I think. Also, interesting fact about this cover art, the armor Master Chief is wearing looks to be wrong and there <laughs> yeah. were there were no M7 submachine guns in Halo 1. Right. There also weren't flood tentacle monsters either. But it's okay. It's okay. But it's it's okay. an artist's yeah. version. And it's art. a cool take. Art. It's art. Yeah. So I... It's a good picture, though. It is. I, it's some cool stuff. I like uh, uh, Operation First Strike's cover the best. Do you, think, that or, do you uh, think this Ghost is the, the big thing at the, the end? The Gravemind? Yeah, I think that's what it's That could be, yeah. Because be. it, it, he did get the, uh, the little pod things, right? Yeah. That's a good possibility. Hmm. Master Chief just decided to show off a new suit. <laughs> but yeah, like like spoiler, I did not know that the keys died in this. Yeah. So I was really surprised. It's it was I, sad I thought for too. sure he would live. No. But I was like, one of oh. my one of my favorite characters in all of Halo dies in the first game. Yeah, the fir very which first very first game. Because Keys was badass. <laughs> and we're gonna tell you why. He shows the enough way of he it. dies to is really sad. Yeah. Like the whole process. Especially so. him remembering mm -hmm. and everything. Did you watch the terminal I sent you from the anniversary that no, shows that? I didn't. It's, it's heartbreaking. It is. I, I don't need that. Why? You do. I don't need that in my life. You need to cry. No. Yes. These are your tears. <laughs> I'm drinking my own tears. Yeah. Anyway, what I thought about it, I love the extra parts added on to it because Halo won the game pretty much you're just constantly fighting and the story is pretty much straightforward just alright we're here you're gonna kill a bunch of aliens oh crap more aliens we gotta go that's pretty much the story this adds so much dif so many different points of view like we see yeah, yeah. the Covenant's point of view on the ring which is interesting because they revere this 
payload ring as a holy artifact. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they're here, to claim it, to go on their great journey. Then we see the points of view of the Marines and naval crewmen who survived the crash of the Pillar of Autumn. The OESTs. Yeah. And how they go through, because, I mean, the military operations aren't just what we see in the game, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Like, my favorite chapters is the ones following Lieutenant McKay going to the Pillar of Autumn and getting those supplies. I be. Yeah, I just love that. Yeah. Uh, Dietz does very good, uh, like, battles, like ground battles. Like, that's something mm -hmm. he's good at. And uh, I think there's a lot more to unpack yeah. with that, too. Because, like, like, space battles are cool, but mm -hmm. you don't get, like, all of the like direct impact on a person mm -hmm. who's like fighting boots on the ground you know yeah and I, and a lot of the books master chief and the other spartans will say that they hate being on ships because yeah. they're putting their lives in the hand of naval crewmen and they can't really do anything mm -hmm. and marines feel the same pretty much speaking of naval crewmen i thought that was a funny part of the story at the very beginning when they first land yeah um and that that girl like sells them all out yeah and, and then stuff. that was funny. automatically dies yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into our read and tell. Spoilers from here on out. Alright. Okay, so we begin with a direct continuation from the last Halo book we reviewed, The Fall of Reach. The Pillar of Autumn followed subspace coordinates Cortana received from the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV, which happened in that book. And they're following the Cole Protocol, which is they mm -hmm. have to jump away from human space to, to not lead the Covenant there. And plus, Cortana's just curious and wants to know where this goes. So, And it's away from human space, so win-win. Yep. So once they arrive, they realize that the Covenant have beat them to the system, and Captain Keys orders everyone awake that you, they can, because most humans' slipspace journeys take a while, and so they don't use all their food and oxygen. Uh, humans are put into cryostasis for long journeys. So he orders everyone who can be to be thawed, including the Master Chief. And as he's doing this, he's fighting the Covenant fleet. And pretty, pretty much he's like, where's the battle? Yeah. <laughs> when he wakes up. He, Why did you wake me? He's like, I am ready. I love the scene when that guy is waking him up, yeah, too. Because he's like so nervous. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh my gosh, this and guy is a, literally a legend. Uh, <laughs> and that other I'm guy, about to wake him up. That other guy's looking at his picture of his wife. And it's mm -hmm. super sad. Yeah. The the human characters here, uh, they don't get a good ending. It's very sad. I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to sit to Google and say that That's now. That's though. Yeah. For the most part. For the most part. It's like, it's like that... Uh, it's just Chief. It's pretty much like they're all getting planned and they're like, many Marines died to get us this information. That's all we do. All Marines do is die unless you're the A-team over there. And he just points to Sergeant Johnson and yeah. Master Chief and the Arbiter. <laughs> Yeah, the Arbiter. Yeah, who's in this book, kind of. He's the leader of the Covenant Forces. Where was he, though? Like He was on board his flagship, just leading, pretty much. Like, remember in Halo 2, it opens with him being on trial for the destruction of Halo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was Supreme Commander of the Fleet of Particular Justice, which is the what so these ships are part when, of. When, um, what's his name? I don't know. The elite that you follow in the book. Zuka Zamami. Yeah, Zamame, that that one. Yeah. Um. Did uh, was he there when he was like requesting the mission to fall, to hunt Master Chief? Was he in that room? Because you remember he no, had to that talk was to the, the higher ups. That was the prophet and his gang. The prophet. There was, were a couple of elites in there. Too, yeah, though. but they were on the prophet side. The uh, okay. the prophet was trying to take. Okay, so the elites are. Leaders of all things military matters. And since they're at Halo, the prophet who's with them, he's a minor prophet, since Halo is such a big religious thing and the prophets are kind of all about religion, he says that he should take command because this is a religious matter. But when the humans show up, uh, Thel, Vadimi, the Arbiter, he's like, okay, now this has just become a military affair. You need to let me protect this place. And the prophet sends orders around and uh, Vadimi countermands them and other stuff that we don't really see in this book but we do see it. this edition has some extra uh, things in the back about the story like this is a 
this story here yeah, is yeah. a report. That was cool. That's all of the Covenant reports on action and whatnot that happens. And uh, it goes into that a little bit more. So you're saying, like, he was, like, technically in here, but you never, like, actually yeah, saw him? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I got you. Okay. Because I like the, the one elite who's like, hey, man, I got you. I, yeah. I'll vouch for you. <laughs> I like that guy. He was cool. I don't remember his name, though. Probably Jabalu. It, it, was, it was something May. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they all are. every yeah every elite at this time has the e suffix okay. attached to the end of the name that denotes that they serve the covenant. Oh. So at, when they do the covenant civil war and break away, they remove that from their names. That's cool. So that's why Thelvatomy becomes Thelvatum. That's cool. yeah. Check cool that story. Cool story. Cool culture and world building there for the aliens. Okay, so Master Chief gets thawed out, and he's just like, I need a weapon. Just kidding. Not until Halo 2. But <laughs> he's pretty much like, all right, where do I need to go? And they're like, right this way, I'll take you to the bridge. And then the dude who was up in the control station waking him up gets blasted. And it's sad. Like, him. Yeah, like an elite breaks in, and he looks at a photo of his wife, and then gets shot. Yeah. So Master Chief starts running through. As he bleeds out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a brutal. What? Uh, he probably wouldn't be bleeding though, because plasma fire cauterizes all. The nah, lines. he bleed. He bleed. No, he okay, bleed. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so was it just like Star Wars? Did, weren't there? Wasn't there blood there in was. the original Star it Wars? It doesn't make any sense. Like, he cuts him <laughs> off with this flaming, yeah, <laughs> en- energy lightsaber, but raw blood flies everywhere. It's yeah, in like, the cantina, he cut yeah, that guy's arm off. He cuts off. that guy's yeah. arm off, and the dude wasn't even being mean to Luke. He was just like, "Hey, man, I really like your hair." I'm pretty sure the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the big snow monster. Is it a Wampa? Yeah. He had blood did, too. Did his arm yeah. Up? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> George Lucas really didn't know what to do. <laughs> Love the originals. Love the originals. <laughs> Riley doesn't. I, don't. I, I like them. Me and Tanner do. But anyway. It's not a popular opinion. Yeah, it isn't. It's not an opinion the Jedi would tell you. Yo, Riley's, Riley's like, I love the prequels and I hate sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay so Master Chief is running through the ship with his woes um, the Covenant are boarding now because the Prophet doesn't want them to destroy the human ship in fear of hitting the ring so yeah. they send boarding teams and so Master Chief goes to the bridge and meets our good old friend Captain Keys and he's there chewing on his pipe from the last game uh, novel last book, yeah. last book. And he's just like, Cortana, what's our uh, status? She's like, well, a single Halcyon-class cruiser against a dozen superior Covenant capital ships, I'm content with three. Make that four kills. So apparently she just wiped out four ships while you're running away from the cryo bay. Yep. I want to see how that happened. I want to see Keys doing a bunch of maneuvers and shit. I wish we would have seen that. The reverse 720 tailspin. Yes. <laughs> I want to see him do another thing. I remember last book when he used that uh, long sword, remote piloted with the nuke, and like slid it onto the ship. So that was cool. And I want you to make the meme of of SpongeBob. That's seen in SpongeBob, and it says Captain Key circa twenty five. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be funny. I'll get on that. Okay. So he gets to the bridge. Cortana's like, I killed him. And then uh, Keys is like, the object. I'm going to try and land the Automon. And Cortana's like, you know, one of my subroutines could do it. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to do it myself. And she's like, oh, this war has enough dead heroes. And he's like, shut up, Cortana. <laughs> Stick shift it emits from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> he doesn't even trust ends on level. Oh, fast and furious. Yep. So, Keys is going to be the last one off the ship, pretty much. And he's like, uh, Master Chief, we can't let Cortana get captured. And the other AI, Wellesley, who's a meme in himself, yeah. he, uh, uh, they're going to get off with Wellesley's with the ODSTs. And uh, Cortana's going to be taken by Master Chief because she can fit in his armor. So, Chief takes Cortana. She's like, remember, there's two of us in here now. And... Uh, uh, Captain Keys gives Master Chief his pistol and goes, Sorry, son, I don't keep it loaded. You'll have to find ammo as you go. 
which is a very memeable moment. It's like, it's dangerous to go along, alone. Here, take this unloaded back. To <laughs> but then you walk out of the bridge, see grunts, and you immediately find ammo, and you realize that this is the best gun in the game. <laughs> it is. It is, though. It's a 50 cal. It's 12.7 yeah, millimeters. It's ridiculous. It is. I wonder how regular Marines can handle the recoil. Probably space magic. Space magic. Yeah, when, th- when science... The anti-grav. Yeah, helps. anti-grav, yeah, yeah. It's all that. Okay. So Master Chief fights his way uh, through the pillar of arm to find an escape pod. He can't take the one that's just right there because that's for the bridge crew. So, And he can handle it. That's too easy. Yeah. So he goes through, and we see a perspective shift to uh, Foe Hammer Raleigh, who's a Pelican pilot. She and a bunch of other Pelican pilots run into the hangar bay and get in their birds and go ahead and take off so the UNSC can have air support while they're on the ring. Then we also see the uh, Marines of the 105th ODST Mm -hmm. and them get prepared to drop onto the ring. They have their own way down. Silva, Major Silva, who is... He's a father to his men, but he's an asshole to Master Chief. Like, he really hates Master Chief and the Spartans as a whole. Because, I mean, he has some good reasoning, too. But, I mean, it still did not like it, him at all. Yeah, it goes too far. Yeah. I, I, I bet you like. Like, literally every yeah. time Chief would do something, you'd be like, yeah, but he's, he's still not a Marine. Yeah, like, stuff like that. Like, chill, man. I bet you loved it when Captain Keys put him in his place. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did. Too bad for what happened to Captain Keys immediately after. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well. Yep. Okay, so we also get another interesting uh, perspective. We see an elite who's an Osuna, and he works for the Prophet, and he basically uses stealth technology to move around undetected and just gather intel for the Prophet. And he hears humans talk about this Keys person, and he thinks he's important. So he goes to look for Keys. And then we also see another elite named... We don't really see his point of view, but we see him get his ass kicked by the Master Chief. And we meet a grunt. Yes, this story has grunt pro points of view. He's named Yaya. I love this Yes, Yaya is awesome. So he's walking around, and they find this wounded Spec Ops elite that Master Chief totally handed his own ass to. And... Yayap and his friend are like, we don't want to go and fight, we'll die. And he's like, wait. Let's bring back this elite. Yeah, let's bring back this elite. Go go home early. Yeah, so they do that. And uh, they take him back to the fleet for medical attention. And this is one thing that I don't know if they did anything in the war, but elites rarely seek medical attention because of their warrior culture. They just Mm -hmm. heal on their own pretty much. Yeah. So that's a little bit thing, but I mean, I don't think they had that all figured out at this point. Yeah, when they were writing it. So, and he was just novelizing, novelizing the game. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, the I end. think he did a pretty good oh, job. Oh, yeah, he overall. definitely did. Um, so, we see all these perspectives. They're opening up what we're going to see throughout the rest of the book. And so, everyone gets off the Pillar of Autumn in various ways. Major Silva makes fun of uh, naval lifeboats having a supply of wine, which they do. <laughs> but he's like, how are we going to go? And all the Marines are like, feet first, sir! Because they're ODSTs, and they're pretty much locked in these coffins that go down to the surface Didn't of a couple the of them die? Yeah, a couple of them failed and just died. And like, they scream on the radio, and Silva just turns them off. He just, like, mutes them. He's like, okay, no more of that. <laughs> that's enough so, of that. Someone was playing music, like rock music, as they went down. And he they, they, That goes against UNSC protocol, but Silva's like, I'll let it slide. <laughs> so they're doing that. Master Chief grabs this dude who uh, fell and throws him in. Remember that from the game? And he makes the funniest noise. He's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. And this is a funny fan, fan theory, though, that I saw an eye funny. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, is it that bad? No, it's not oh, that bad. Okay. I mean, kind of. But okay. Master Chief gets on this lifeboat, and Cortana's like, wouldn't you rather take a seat? 
we'll be fine. And he just hangs on as they crash from orbit. <laughs> and the theory is, because when he wakes up after he crashes, all the Marines and the pilot in there are dead. It, the theory is that because Master Chief didn't sit down and brace, he flung around the cabin and crushed all the Marines <laughs> because he wouldn't brace. <laughs> So it's pretty much that Marine, sir, are we going to be okay? I don't want to die out here, Master Chief, knowing damn well he's about to crush <laughs> everyone in here. You'll be fine. That makes sense, though. Yeah. God. You accept, You'll course. be fine. <laughs> he's like, Marine, it's either me or you. That sounds like some like robot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Blood everywhere, like Play-Doh blood. <laughs> so yeah, that's my fan theory for Halo 1. It's a pretty sound theory. Yeah. So Master Chief begins linking up with other Marines around where he lands. But the real star of this opening is Captain Keys and then Major Silva and the other ODSTs. Because they land and it goes into the detail of all the supplies they pack into their... Uh, HEVs, which are human entry vehicles, that's what their little drop pods are called, mm -hmm. and they all load up and they dig these lines and he uses tactics like the Romans use their square fighting tactics because Covenant moved to attack them and they're all on these ghosts, which are these fast mm -hmm. uh, scout vehicles. They're pretty much like a cavalry charge, uh, but in the 26th century using advanced alien tech. But he uses his rocket launchers and sniper marines. And they're basically, the ghosts can't charge them. They're just like sur doing circles around them and their operators can get shot out. And it's just a really cool battle scene. But the part Riley likes is that uh, Captain Keys, after landing the Autumn on the ring, he goes to take his spot in the lifeboat with their marine guard and uh, the other bridge crew. And uh, he's like, you know what would be fun as we crash on this ring? I need some wine. I need a drink. He goes to grab some, and he's like, wait a minute. Remember the Usuna, the dude using stealth tech? He found keys and decided to hop in their life pod and probably crush them all to death like Master Chief. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he was just going to ride with them and keep going on his stealth mission because he's like, oh, this is the human captain. He's an important mm -hmm. dude. We need to capture him. So, Key sees the shimmer, and he's like, I've been around enough to know about Covenant act Active Camo. He looks to the battle-hardened Marine, and he's like, Son, may I borrow your sidearm? And he's like... Pff, and just shoots up close. Uh, two shots, I believe, double taps him in the <laughs> head and kills him, and everyone freaks out because they're like, Holy shit! <laughs> and Keys is just... Keys just like a badass. He ejects the clip, the mag, sorry. Uh, ooh. ooh, comments. <laughs> he ejects the mag, ejects the shell in the chamber, and hands it back. Why is it in a clip? Because clips are stripper clips. You load them through the top. A magazine is what you uh, load into the I always the thought you called it when it was a pistol a clip. Mm -mm. That's what gangsta rap will do to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, everyone's pretty freaking out, and Key's just like a badass. After he does this, he's like, that thing works pretty good, son. Don't forget to reload it. Hands it back to him. So they crash, and the Covenant are immediately on them. They're trying to link, get to an LZ so they can link up with friendly forces, but uh, another, a, part, mem a member of the bridge crew named Dowski, she's a little bitch, <laughs> and... She thinks... Don't sugarcoat it or anything. No, the best plan is to surrender. If you didn't know, Riley, the Covenant never take prisoners. Yeah. If you remember in the last book, uh, John alludes to them being too late to rescue civilians, and the jackals and grunts ate them. I didn't remember that. Yeah. Jeez. So, they, don't worry, they were avenged. The Spartans killed every last one of those grunts and jackals. Anyway. So, yeah, surrendering to the Covenant... Not a good idea. Okay. And she keeps Except whining, and Captain Keys is like, okay, I give you permission to surrender. And he ties her up, <laughs> takes all her supplies, and leaves her there for the Covenant because he has, he's too old for this shit, and he ain't dealing with it. And then the Covenant finds her. Yeah, and, and she tells them where they're going and offers information. She's like, yeah, the, he's the captain. This is the guy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, thank you. 
No, like, not yet. Not yet. They catch up to them and uh, surround them. The Marines are all either killed or they put down their weapons because, I mean, they're surrounded. They can't do anything. And uh, Dowski shows up, and she's looking all smug like, See, I told you, Captain. I'm the better person. And then immediately Pew. the elite kills everyone but Keys. And Dowski's like, Sir, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. And then he kills her, too. And there goes Lieutenant Hickawa, Ensign Lovell, Lieutenant Dominique, and all the other great bridge crew members yeah, from the last book. That they could have used. Yep, rest in peace. I will always remember you. <laughs> crew of the UNSC Pillar of Autumn. It's at Major Silva. And Dowski. You, you just reminded me of, like, when uh, that character, Kevin Hart, when he's the bunny in Secret Life of Pets, when he's called R.I.P. Ricky. <laughs> so what made me think of. Okay. <laughs> Glad to make you think of Kevin Hart as a bunny. <laughs> okay. So, as this happens, and Master Chief is uh, running around picking up Marines, Silva decides to go hunting and to form an alpha base, which is a UNSC term for a their initial base of operations on a planet. And you're like, well, where should we go? We should be on a hill. Yeah, he's like, oh, look at that gigantic butte. Yeah, that's the best one. That's the highest point. Let's take that. Yeah. Oh, it's already occupied by the Covenant. Well, I have someone for that. Enter Lieutenant Melissa McKay, my favorite character in this book. She is tough as nails, ODST. And she literally does everything. She does. Silva says jump, she says how high. He says crap, she says how much and what color. I was very involved. Yep. <laughs> Isn't that what Silva t- says to uh, Master Chief when he's grilling him? I think it is. I think it's I like, don't know. He, I th- he, we'll get to that. I don't know if he said exactly that. <laughs> it would be funny if it was. <laughs> I wasn't trying to quote him. but. <laughs> <laughs> so All the hunters, I forgot. Yeah, the hunters the, are cool. The way they describe that is good, mm-hmm. too. The okay, so McKay and her company of ODSTs, and ODSTs are orbital drop shock troopers. And other than the Spartans, they are the best the UNSC's got. They ride into the battle on their metal coffins, and they're basically like today's Navy SEALs on steroids, pretty much, because they do receive some augmentations, not to the level of the Spartans or anything, but I mean, they're above baseline human. So their shock troop special operations professional. Before they move up to take the butte, she is uh, going and inspecting everyone. And if there's any equipment jangling that could make noise, they're taping it down, mm-hmm. being very professional about it, which I really like. That adds just a lot of character to it to me. He seems to know quite a bit about the military. Mm-hmm. And the humor that they have, like all the Marines have, is really cool. Yeah. Like they talk about bribing pilots with chocolate bars and stuff like that and just the scrounger that all soldiers marines and sailors have mm-hmm. in them so they move up they take the butte and uh they do it professionally well and silva moves the main marines up so now they have alpha base but the captain has been captured so that puts major oh, no. that's major silva in command so master chief returns to to friendly territory for the first time since they left the autumn and it's probably the only time he ever goes there I'm pretty sure uh, he returns to Alpha Base and takes off his armor to do maintenance and uh, he gets ordered to go report to Major Silva and uh, they tell him specifically to leave your armor and he hates that like the Spartans spend so much time in their armor it's pretty much a part of them so it, it, they Already, he's being made uncomfortable. He's just being an asshole yeah. for the sake of it. He he walks up to the office, which is being guarded by two hell jumpers, and they uh, start trouble with Chief. Like just they're being dicks too. And then McKay walks up and says, "That's pretty funny for a guy whose name is like, he has some kind of <laughs> weird name. I've got to find it because they make fun of John's last name being one one seven. So." <laughs> <laughs> you can edit this out, can't you? Um, I won't be doing the editing. You so. won't. Okay. Um. Yeah. Anyway. 
Um, like we said, Silva does not like Master Chief. Mainly because he um, beat the crap out of some of his guys and killed them. Yeah, in the last, in the last book. book. Um, Chief was like minding his own business at the gym, and these guys came in and challenged him. And he said, okay. Um, but they were like coming at him pretty hard. And so he's like, well, I mean, my... The first thing I was taught was to defend myself, so he did, and he ended up killing those guys. And uh, ever since then, Silva has really hated him. Mm hmm Okay, so what happens here, this is what I was looking for. So he shows up to the um, to Silva's office, and they ask, who are you? And he's like, Spartan 117. And they're like, Spartan 117, the smaller of the two Marines inquired. What the hell kind of name is that? And then McKay steps in and says, look who's talking. That's a pretty strange question from a guy named Yutrizanika or something. <laughs> I don't know, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but... It's... <laughs> Uterzenica or something. Sounds like a medicine you would take that has a bunch of side effects read off really fast. On it's, the... it's Russian or some yeah. derivative of that. Yeah. And she just, the the hell jumpers there, they just laugh it off. And she says, never mind those two, Chief. They'll jump happy. My name's McKay. Go on in. So he goes in, and Silva just immediately starts grilling him. He calls him a freak. And yep. says that the Spartan program was a failure and a flaw, and that the ODSTs are the ones who's really going to win the war. It's all about his pride, and uh, he would be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> even the ODSTs under him at towards the end are like, "Yeah, this guy's crazy." <laughs> it's sad. They had such a good job. They had an opportunity. Um. So, the ODSTs in the game are any of them in here? I'm guessing no. I'm. The Marines you go with on uh, to rescue Captain Keys, based on the book, are ODSTs. But when this was written, they didn't have the ODST armor that we know of. So when the my original the, version, that, sorry, that wasn't my question. The the ODSTs in the ODST game are any of them in this? No. Book? Okay. If they were, they'd be dead. Okay. Yeah. They're a different unit. They were never on the pillar bottom. Gotcha. Uh, the only ones of them who were at reach was Buck, and he survived. Conveniently. Yeah. Nathan Fillion always survives. <laughs> so, yeah. After they, uh, Ma Major Silva grills Master Chief and, uh, gets him to say, Sir, no, sir. He's like, okay. He, a switch is thrown. He's like, all right, at ease. And they start planning a rescue of Captain Keys. They, they kind of put aside everything, and they're just like, all right, let's do this. Mm. Which, I mean, Silva may be a dick, but at least he knows when to turn it off <laughs> normally. Kind of. I feel kinda. like McKay kind of pushed him Tra probably. to do that. McKay's my halo waifu, by the oh way. Gosh. <laughs> so next part we see... She's got that cool tattoo. She does. <laughs> next scene we have... Uh, Return to uh, Zamami. Oh boy. Yeah. He needs permission to hunt after the demon, which is what the Covenant called a master I love chief. That too. Yeah. He's basically an affront to their religion specifically, and they know he's a threat, and all the elites want to kill him. And since he has survived an encounter, he thinks he is readily qualified to hunt him down. But he needs a partner to do it. And guess who they he also chooses? call him like the human with the special armor. Yeah. Which I think is funny. But he needs a partner, and guess who he decides to pick? The grunt that saved his life. The way he asks him is hilarious. He's like, Hello! Congratulations! <laughs> I'm moving you to my unit! <laughs> yeah, and Yap Yap's like, Special operations! <laughs> like he's like he's blessing him. Yeah. <laughs> and Yap Yap is like, No! <laughs> Yap Yap is... Because you saved my life, I, <laughs> I have moved you to my unit. You will be on the front lines <laughs> and fight hard for the covenant. Good news! He's like, no. <laughs> but I liked my quiet unit. Exactly. <laughs> but he realizes he's stuck there and he he nuts up. As much as a grunt can, apparently. 
As much as a gas sucker. Could, yeah. Could. Grunts breathe methane. They have to wear these environment suits that give them chilled methane to breathe. They breathe farts. Yep. It's wonderful. That's what you wanted as your quirk, pretty much. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So he gets moved up, and uh, Zamami goes to meet with the prophet and a bunch of higher up elites because he wants this mission to hunt down the demon. I like this scene. Yeah. He goes and pleads his case. Another elite who's basically his bro, his senpai. They, he's like, I'll, I'm going to give you as best I can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get this for you, man. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does not work. He's yep. like, I am sorry, but they do not see the tactical importance of I am this. sorry, brother. Yeah. Um, he also made it sound like... Um... Like they were considering it. But yeah, no. like he was trying to soften the blow. Yeah. But Z- Zambi knew that and he was like, You don't have to do that, man. <laughs> you don't have to soften it for me. I can take it. <laughs> so. And wouldn't you know it? What ha- What is the next part of the story? The raid on the truth and reconciliation. The very ship they just met on, which is where Captain Keys is being held, gets assaulted by Master Chief, a bunch of hell jumpers. And, uh, they move on hey, in. Hey, yo, Zamame. Yeah. Your mission is approved. Now. Yeah, they're like, uh, <laughs> in spite of recent events, we have decided to approve your I'm pretty sure when they're doing this, there's a dude brushing blood off the deck <laughs> from where Master Chief killed someone. <laughs> we have decided that your idea has merit. Go get him. <laughs> so... Yeah, we, and, we had to debate this for a while, yeah. but I think this was probably the best course of action. <laughs> it's funny, I read the older version, like I said, and there's a very funny mix-up in this. One of the Marines who uh, is like the head. Oh, I thought you of, meant another one. No, I was like, what? Ahead of the, instead of Sergeant Johnson being everywhere like he is in the game, like every level with Marines, he's there. Mm-hmm. Because he's, I mean, Sergeant Johnson could be anywhere in space. He's the strongest person in Halo, of course. But anyway, they have Sergeant Parker. And in my version, he starts off as a dude. But halfway through the chapter, when it switches back, Sergeant Parker is now a girl. <laughs> Which I remember reading to be like, were you always a girl? <laughs> but no. They fixed that in this version, though. So it's, it's a chick throughout. Yeah. So Master Chief... A bunch of Marines die throughout this, but Master Chief is still tearing through all the Covenant. They rescue Captain Keys. He's like, this was crazy. You shouldn't have done this. Thanks. So they move out. They get in a Covenant dropship because Captain Keys can fly it. He can fly anything. Yeah. Yeah. Navigation is his strong suit. He, they see two hunters. It's like Anakin. Pretty much. Except better tactical. <laughs> just, I just wonder. He runs it. He runs over two hunters and a drop ship. <laughs> just fun. <laughs> <laughs> Crushes those little colonies of worms. <laughs> it's like, oh, they do that. They get away, and then we have another mission that Lieutenant McKay is tasked with, they are going to raid the Pillar of Autumn's crash site for supplies. So they load up Good on... Idea. Yeah, they load up on their pelicans, and her company goes there, and they assault the outside. It's raining, and uh, they use sniper fire to do it. And uh, they talk about an inexperienced elite pilot coming this, in. This isn't the part when they're going through that valley, is it? No, that's later. That's when they're okay. returning from the Pillar of Autumn. They have to get the supplies first on all those warhogs. So, uh, an, an inexperienced Covenant dropship comes in to try and stop him, but he uh, lands to drop his troops with the doors open facing them. So, their snipers, the ODSC snipers, just automatically wipe out yeah. all the infantry. <laughs> and I think they hit it with a rocket and blow it up, too. Mm-hmm. And they know that, yeah, this guy was inexperienced because he fucked up real bad. <laughs> <laughs> So they move into the Pillar of Autumn and they seal off the upper decks because they don't need anything up there. All that they need is on the lower decks. They get ammo, food. They load up with like 50 or so Warthogs and four uh, MA-08B main battle tanks, the Scorpion tanks, which are 
beastly. <laughs> At least here. I mean, realistically, they're bad designs, but compared to the Covenant design, which is basically a floating artillery gun, <laughs> it's better. I hate those. Yeah, man. the rates. It's fun to run over people. It is, but I mean, you have to aim so freaking high. <laughs> And you're always but looking down again and then looking back up. In the game, the Scorpion is the way to go. They barely exist in multiplayer because they're so overpowered. <laughs> you barely get to use them. And when you do, you basically dominate the entire time. The, what what I go back to the most is that mission where you're in, uh, was it New Mombasa? Yeah, you're going in through uh, the city? Kazingo Boulevard. Okay, you're going through the city, and you, you're just like... <laughs> yeah, you're just shooting everything. It's such an easy level. Yep. That is a fun one. Until you get to the end, then you, they make you hop out. Yeah. Unfortunately. But you have fun rampaging by the tank. I, I think it's actually funner when you get to the final level, and you're on the coastal highway, and you get in one. Like, you're mm-hmm. escorting the big elephant. Yeah. Which is a machine, not an actual elephant. It'd be fun <laughs> if it was. <laughs> Just running over brutes. <laughs> okay, back to the story. So, they hook up a bunch of trailers to warthogs and load up whatever they can. And they send the pelicans off uh, carrying some more back to the base. And uh, they're going to bring them back. And they're going to take some of the auto cannons off the Pillar of Autumn so they can mount them as AA guns at Alpha Base. Mm -hmm. They're also going to fill up as much fuel as they can, and then they're going to um, uh, bring a bunch of technicians and just people who they need because they need more people to drive and shoot on the Warthogs so they can all get out. But getting all this stuff was the easy part. Now they have to get it back to Alpha Base, and they don't have the Pelicans to airlift them all. So they form up as best they can they have four tanks in the middle because the tanks are uh weak against infantry apparently which doesn't make any sense um and the uh, warhogs are all around that and a couple of the warhogs don't have trailers so they can just like move freely and act as a qrf quick reaction force so they just gotta make sure everyone knows what i'm talking about no, I just thought of like a little thing icon coming up in the corner. Yeah, just like <laughs> reaction force. Cool. <laughs> Maybe Tanner should put that in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they do that, and they have to get past these. Uh, they there's a bunch of thin, um, narrow passageways that they could take, but they'd have to be single file, and that's basically suicide. Mm-hmm. So the only other way is a very wide uh, canyon that they can maneuver in. But there's a bunch of hills surrounding it where the Covenant can just shoot down on them. So they just, McKay decides to go through that one. And so they do. And there's a sniper battle between a Marine and this Elite. And he kills this Elite sniper. And then, like, an officer he almost kills. Like, the Field Master was mm-hmm. his name. and Well, not his name, but his rank. And... The Marines basically are able to make it through. So they make it to Alpha Base, and they have a bunch of needed supplies to keep the UNSC resistance they on the some banshees. They too. did. So now, uh, Keys is going to go after a Covenant weapon cache that they've heard about, that he heard some of the guards talking about. He mm-hmm. can translate Covenant language. Or they just speak in English. Okay, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he does that. And he also hears something about a silent cartographer, which is what the which is a map. It's gonna lead the Covenant to the Halo's control room That's and a map. I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map. He sends Master Chief after the control room because Halo is a weapon, according to the Covenant, and if the UNSC can control it, they could turn the tide of the war pretty much. Wow. Yeah. So Master Chief assaults this island with a bunch of Marines and they push in, he fights some hunters. Did you want to talk about that? Uh, I just like um, when they talk about, they call them Bond brothers. Mm-hmm. All hunters travel in groups of two. Um, and, like, whenever Chief would kill one of them, the other one would, like, howl in pain because mm-hmm. he was so sad. Um, I just thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, and they he also describes how hard they are to kill which mm. I really appreciated because they are not in the game in the game it only takes one magnum shot to the back to kill well, them 
But, I mean, you can explain that lore wise because the Magnum fires high X. So when you shoot him in the back, it blows up and the fragments bounce around inside the armor. But, I mean. Can you really kill him? One yeah. Shot? On any difficulty. One shot with the Magnum. That. Yep. But just this game? Yeah, just this game. And all the. Say. In, in, in Halo 3, they're really hard to kill on high difficulties. Yeah. And uh, I just love that Halo 1, if you have to take out hunters. <laughs> You don't want to reach for a rocket launcher. You reach for the pistol. <laughs> so Master Chief descends into the Halo ring and finds the map room. And he finds the control room. And they find all these like um, passageways that are underneath the ring. And they can fit a pelican. And uh, they decide that the Covenant won't expect an aerosol from underground. <laughs> so Foe Hammer picks him up. And <laughs> takes him to the control room. And Jokes just, on you. Yeah, don't you That's just the one him. thing they prepare for. Yeah, they do have a shade turret in the game, like an anti-air battery right there. But they really? don't. They don't do jack. That's just a bunch of grunts there, and they just run away as soon as it pops <laughs> up. Yeah, and then Elite runs out after there. He's like, "What the? Hell? <laughs> Why aren't you shooting? Where are you going? <laughs> Report back here." I will, I will turn all your hides. <laughs> and then he dies because Master Chief is just unstoppable. <laughs> so Master Chief murders his way through all these mm-hmm. passageways. He, he links up with uh, more Marines. And uh, they get a Warthog. They drive through a bunch of icy canyons and passageways. Then he gets a tank and does that. And uh, he arrives at the control room, and he s- takes Cortana out and puts her into the network of Halo. And she's going over everything, and she's like, holy crap. John, you have got to find the captain. He's not finding a weapons cache. I'm not going to tell you what's happening. Exactly. But, yeah, but you need to go. And he's like, Cortana, you're not making any sense. Calm down. She's like, go, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time. Go. There's no time. Go. But like, could you explain while he's running? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they just gotta be vague for the player. Or no, she stayed plugged into the thing, right? Yeah, she's trying to get. That's right. She's trying to get over the entire recorded history of the forerunners, pretty much. Yeah. And everything. I love the way that um, Chief is like. You know, he feels really lonely because yeah. he's been with Cortana for like what a few years now. No. Just no? just a uh, couple months. Really. Just, not even then. Like, he used her during the uh, testing in the Fall of Reach. Testing, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but then he doesn't use her again. She remains on board the Pillar of Autumn oh. to run its systems for the space battle. So they really only start working together fully and falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> that was really forced. Yeah. Um, no, but she is his Apparently they're very attached after a few months. After, but, not even then. Um... Like it's also I guess from, he, she is with him like every waking moment. Yeah. So it is kind of different. It also stems from the fact that she's a clone of Doctor Halsey's brain. She's based off of Doctor Halsey, and uh, Doctor Halsey uh, favors John. Just he's her favorite. Have you seen the boys yet? Yeah. Kind of makes me think of uh, Homelander and <laughs> that one girl. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Anyway. You. Um. They did actually, though, um, Halsey, uh, oh, Lord. no, listen, in the Fall of Reach novel, when Cortana first pops up and is talking, she's looking, Halsey has a picture, a framed picture of every one of the Spartan 2s, and in the center is John, and Cortana says, hmm, he's attractive in a sort of ca- uh, caveman kind of way, Good don't Lord. you think so, Doctor? And she blushes, she's like, apparently she did think so. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... But you gotta be honest though. You know Master Chief be Oh my bunked. gosh, stop. <laughs> anyway. Um I do like the way they describe how Chief is like kinda lonely, um, going through this dark really a dark part of the of the hay. Yeah. Thing. Um I mean, it's literally dark, and it's also, like, really Rainy, scary. Rainy, foggy. Like, Halo turns into a horror game at this point. It, it does. It's um, But, yeah, he just feels really lonely, and he's actually a little bit kind of scared and yeah. anxious. Like, he finds dead Covenant. There's Covenant fleeing. He's not, he's not used to an enemy that doesn't face him head on. Mm-hmm. So that kind of freaks him out. Yeah, like, he goes past uh, Jackals and Grunts are fleeing and disarray. He sees no elites. They're trying to keep this... Uh, uh, building this foreigner installation contained like uh 
This see is the what only I've... time I've seen Chief a little bit scared. Yeah. And boy, does he have a reason to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes into the building, fights past a bunch of grunts and jackals. There's no elites, which he notices as being strange because they're always there. He finds some elite corpses that uh, he doesn't know. Like, they were killed by plasma fire. So... He doesn't know what's going on. Oh. Then he runs into a Marine, and the Marine is totally crazy. He's shooting at Chief. He's like, stay away. I'm not going to become one of you. <laughs> and the, you see him in the game, too. And then Master Chief like picks him up in the book, and he's just like, give me a status report. He's like, oh, I got to go. And Master Chief just says, all right, this is a waste of time, and throws him, and the Marine runs away. <laughs> so he gets to the center of this complex, and he finds a Marine's helmet, Jenkins. And old oh boy, does Jenkins get the short end of the stick. He takes a recording from the helmet Oh, yeah, camp. he's the one that's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He takes this recording, and he sees the captain, Sergeant Johnson, and some other Marines, Vicente Mendoza. You all, you In the game, you meet all of these Marines. They're the first Marines you meet on Halo, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And uh, they move in. They find these same elites that were killed by plasma fire, and uh, they're going over mm, uh, friendly fire, blue on blue, perhaps. And Captain Keys walks up, friend of yours, and uh, the Marines like, no, nah, we just met. And then it peters out, and then they go into this place that's been locked down. And the Marine even says, I can try and override it, but the Covenant tried pretty hard to lock it down, sir. And he's like, just open it, Marine. And he does. And then these creatures tentacle monsters it's bad they start bad. It, they charge the marines and sergeant Johnson's is like Jenkins fire your weapon and all the marines are trying to shoot and Mendoza is like this is loco man and he goes running off and Captain Keys is like get back here marine that's an order in the cutscene in game it's cool because you see him load his pistol because you know he keeps it unloaded so he loads it cocks it just <laughs> starts blasting so anyways I just started blasting yeah. <laughs> But it ain't enough. The cutscene ends, and then Master Chief just hears sounds that are just like wet leather. Yeah, wet weather sliding around on the floor, and they started at coming for him. So he is just like, oh my gosh! <laughs> and I remember I was freaking the heck out when I played this originally. Like, I was scared because I was young. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate scary stuff. You know you tried to make me play Outlast. Oh, God. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. That's a fun game. <laughs> I'll play Metro because the monsters can be killed with enough bullets and vodka. Yeah, you can't really kill anyone in Outlast. Yeah, you can't. That's why it's so scary. Mm-hmm. I like to be able to kill my demons. <laughs> so, um, he starts running out because, I mean, tentacle monsters, they've breached containment. Holy crap, we're all going to die. And, uh, He's like, wish Cortana would have warned me about this. But anyways, they um, he meets up with some Marines outside that survived, and they try to go uh, meet up with Fohammer, who's going to pick all of them up. Marines start dropping, though, because the flood are coming. And then he meets the Monitor, not the Orbiter. Sorry. <laughs> So okay. I could swear it was called the Orbiter. I it sounded like you were just like, I need stuff that sounds Halo. And they, you said the Arbiter. Okay. But I, he's I an Google, orb. The I Google, orb. I he's an orbiter. orbiter. <laughs> and there is an elite named the Orbiter. There is? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. It exists. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google that now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So he meets. 343 Guilty Spark, monitor of installation 04. He's a British robot, so of course he's trustworthy. Yeah. So, I mean, he goes on all about procedure, and your combat skin could be a little better. Apparently, but he's 100,000 years old. Yeah. He's been the monitor of this ring since they fired, since the Forerunners all disappeared. And, I mean, he hasn't gone rampant or anything. But, I mean, he's dedicated to protocol. It's going a little crazy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But, anyway. So, he goes all about protocols and stuff, and he's like, we have to get the activation index. From there, we can activate Halo's defenses and take care of this infestation of the Reclaimer? Because he Recla- calls him Reclaimer. That's what humans are. How does he know about humans? They were around before, with the Forerunners. A long time ago. 
Yeah, like, like they far, far away. they were actually um, humans. There was a race before the forerunners called the uh, uh, Promethe no, not Prometheans, precursors, what they were called, and they were really advanced. And they believed in something called the mantle of responsibility, which is that you need to safeguard all life in the galaxy, okay. pretty much. And they looked at all the other races because they wanted someone to inherit the mantle. And uh, they saw humans, and they're like, humans, you deserve it. And the foreigners got super pissy because they felt like they should deserve it. So they fought a war and killed the precursors, and they took up the mantle. And the humans discovered the flood, and uh, they tried to fight the flood, and that led them to fleeing into forerunner space. And the foreigners thought they were being invaded, and the flood used this to start infighting amongst the galaxy's races. So the foreigners defeat the humans and then de-evolutionize us on Earth. Like, they put us all as cavemen, pretty much. Like, we lose all technology and stuff. We're just set back to a pre-industrial state. And uh, they do that. And then the flood comes back full force. The foreigners realize, holy crap. I like crap. Yeah. This story. Yeah. Like, holy Where crap. Where did you get this? This is the, the, the uh, Halo Krypton series by Greg Bear. It's Forerunner. It's all about the Forerunners. Like, it's called the Forerunner Trilogy. Is it a book? Yeah, it's okay. three books. That sounds really cool. Yeah. And it alludes to Master Chief actually being a, a uh, rebirth, like a uh, another life of this uh, Forerunner from way back then. Now we're bringing in reincarnation. Yeah, reincarnation. That's what they're doing or something. It's weird. But anyway. Never mind. Oh, Rowley's not interested. <laughs> It has it has the didact in it and the librarian from Halo Four. Oh boy! Yeah, my don't your favorite. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, don't you just love when a game just drops you in this cutscene with this weird looking lady and she drops all this exposition out of nowhere? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> if you hadn't read those books, you would not have gotten that play in the game. It was weird. Okay, so the monitor brings the uh, orbiter. No. <laughs> Don't tanner this up. He's the orbiter. <laughs> Petition to call him the orbiter now. Dislike this video to sign. Jeez! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bring the whole ship down. <laughs> Let me pause it. Okay, yeah. <laughs>